Hello, my name is Valerie Schaub, and I'm a P2 student at UIC's College of Pharmacy. Today I'm here to talk about foot care for people with diabetes. The nine-step daily foot care guide for people with diabetes is depicted in this picture. The first step is to wash your feet every day with lukewarm water and soap. Second, dry your feet well, especially between the toes. Third, moisturize your feet, but not between the toes. Fourth, check your feet for blisters, cuts, or sores. Five, keep your toenails at a reasonable length. Six, wear socks that aren't too big or too small. Seven, keep your feet warm and dry with shoes that fit comfortably. Eight, never walk barefoot indoors or outdoors. And finally, the last step is to examine your shoes for things that might hurt your feet. Foot problems caused by diabetes. Diabetes can have a significant impact on your feet, so it's important to know how it affects your foot health and its associated risks. In diabetes, normal sweat secretion and oil production that lubricates the skin of the foot is impaired. These factors can lead to abnormal pressure of the skin, bones, and joints of the foot during walking and can lead to the breakdown of the skin of the foot. Sores can develop, and these might be difficult to treat, which can lead to complications. For this reason, daily foot exams are essential. Get in the habit of always checking your feet daily and looking for skin color changes, corns or calluses, ingrown nails, blister sores and other signs of infections, or any cut or breaks. Any cuts, breaks, changes in colors, blisters, and sores in the skin are serious and carry a high risk for infection. If you notice any redness, swelling, or any other conditions mentioned here, make sure to consult a doctor immediately. Harmful complications to prevent. If proper care isn't taken, your feet can develop harmful complications. This includes neuropathy, which is nerve damage that prevents you from feeling pain, a cut or a sore on your foot, a foot ulcer, which is a break in the skin, or a deep sore that results from minor scrapes, cuts, or rubbing of shoes. And this can lead to needing an amputation, which is an unhealed infection caused by poor blood flow that leads to gangrene, also known as tissue death. And finally, this would cause the need for an amputation. In this picture, we have a picture of a normal foot and a diabetic foot. The diabetic foot has increased blood vessel damage, which can lead to tissue damage. And some complications of tissue damage include skin changes, calluses, foot ulcers, per circulation, and the need for an amputation. The importance of proper fitting shoes. Diabetes can cause diminished feeling in the feet, so it's important that shoe fittings by professionals are utilized. With your shoe fitting, be able to extend all your toes. A half an inch space from the end of the longest toe to the tip of the shoe is also recommended. There should also be a snug heel grip. Your shoes shouldn't be too loose or too tight. All shoes should have soft upper materials, preferably with seam-free linings inside. Arch supports should have good cushioning too. Finally, it's important to note that when breaking in new shoes, you should be checking your feet for red or warm spots every hour. The do's and don'ts for diabetic foot care. Charcoal foot is also known as a weakening of bones and joints that occurs in people with significant nerve damage. Some symptoms include swelling, redness, heat, and sensitivity of the foot with or without pain. With charcoal foot, it's important to look out for keeping your blood sugar levels under control as this can reduce the progression of nerve damage to the foot and making sure to check both feet every day and seeing a foot and ankle surgeon immediately if you see any signs of charcoal foot. Diabetic foot care dues. This includes caring for your feet, which includes inspecting your feet daily, and especially the bottoms, and checking for cuts, blisters, redness, swelling, or nail problems, regularly moisturizing your feet to avoid itching or cracking, and getting periodic foot exams from a foot or ankle surgeon to prevent complications as they can reduce the risk of needing an amputation by 45 to 85%. A step each day can help keep problems at bay. Keep the blood flowing in your feet by wriggling your toes and moving your ankles for five minutes and try to do this two to three times a day. Shake out your shoes and feel for objects inside before wearing them because you might not feel a small foreign object in your shoe when it's on your foot. Finally, make sure to maintain healthy blood sugar levels as out of control blood sugar levels can lead to nerve cell damage. The diabetic foot care don'ts include a degree of prevention, which is not using heating pads, hot water bottles, or electric blankets because you can easily burn your feet without noticing. 
now putting your feet directly in hot water and testing it with your hand first. And finally, not removing any corns or calluses on your own and going instead to visit a foot or ankle surgeon for appropriate treatment. Some tips for safe strolling include not wearing tight, elastic, or thick bulky socks, not letting your feet get wet in snow or rain, and wearing warm socks and waterproof shoes in the winter. And finally, try not to walk barefoot because even at home, you can easily scratch or cut your foot, which can lead to further damage. And that concludes today's presentation of diabetic foot health. Thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day.